Hello friends, I am Dr. Vijay Prakash and today I will be telling you about residual rich defects and their management. Now, whenever we are looking at a case where we are having a edentulous span and we want to restore it with a fixed processes. So what we need to see is how much is the, what is the condition of the residual ridge, uh, how much of resorption has taken place, how much of destruction of the, the bone has taken place, what is the status of the tissues, the consistency of the tissues, the shape of the ridge, the location of the ridge, wherever it is located. So these are all the factors which we need to assess in order to determine what would be the best treatment for that particular uh, case. Another thing is proper assessment of the amount of destruction of the residual ridge will help us in determining what type of pontic we will be using, what will what type of abutment we will be using and how many abutment we will be using. So all these are very important factors which we need to look in uh, whenever we are doing uh, diagnosis and treatment planning and uh, intraoral assessment of the, the residual ridge. Now, J. S. Seibert in 1983 gave a classification for the residual ridge defects and uh, initially he gave three classes like class 1, class 2, class 3 and later on a uh, class N that is normal classification was added to this classification. So let's see what is Seibert's classification. Class 1 of the Seibert's classification denotes a residual ridge which has a normal ridge height but has a loss of facial lingual ridge width. So there is uh, basically loss of the, uh, the, the width of the residual ridge but you have a normal height. This is class 1. And Seibert's class 2 is, uh, is a residual ridge which is having a normal facial lingual ridge width. So that means the width is normal but you have a loss of ridge height. So if you can see there is there is there is loss of ridge height but the normal width is uh, is is normal. The width, width of the residual ridge is normal. Another one is class 3 that is Seibert's class 3. It indicates there is both loss of facial height and uh, you have the loss of width. So in this you have a combination that is both the uh, the height and the uh, the width is is destroyed or there is a defect in the residual ridge. There was another classification which was added to Seibert's classification that was class N. N denotes uh, no loss or there is minimal deformity of the ridge and uh, this was indicated in, included later on and this was called as class N. Now there was a study which was done by Adams in 1980 which he, uh, which, which he stated in his study that uh, most of the residual ridge defects uh, in most of the cases they lie in a class 3 uh, situation like they lie in the class 3 classification. That is there is loss of both the height and width of the uh, the residual ridge so depending on what type of ridge defect is there accordingly we need to uh, manage uh, the situation and we may also require to uh, to treat the defects so that uh, we can uh, treat the deficient height or width of the ridge in order to have a, a good uh, contour of the ridge and where we can give uh, aesthetically pleasing fixed partial dentures. So there are six ways in which we can manage uh, and correct ridge defects. First one is a soft tissue ridge augmentation. Uh, H. Abrams in 1980 gave a roll technique which was used to augment the ridge uh, with soft tissues for a uh, class 1 defects. So in a class 1 defect you have a normal height and you have a deficient width that means the width of the ridge is reduced so in this case is what he did uh, he took the palatal epithelium he reflected that and he removed the tissues and rolled back upon itself uh, 
like this so incision was given reflected and these tissues were rolled back uh, in order to thicken the uh, the facial aspect of the residual ridge so as to um, treat the uh, the deficient width of the ridge so this was helpful in restoring the the lost width of the uh, the residual ridge next method of managing residual ridge defects are the interpositional grafts now these grafts were majorly used in correcting class 2 and class 3 types of defects so where you have either uh, deficient height or you are having deficient height and width both so in this uh, in this uh, method what we did we reflected the tissues once these tissues are reflected they form a pouch kind and you took a uh, the soft tissue graft in from the palatal region or in from the tuberosity region and uh, the connected tissue graft and this graft was taken and then placed into uh, these pouches which you have made in order to uh, to restore the residual height and width of the the residual ridge defect so use of connected tissue graft ensured that the the deficient ridge height was restored and uh, it was helpful in treating both class 2 and class 3 types of defects another method of restoring class 3 defects was uh, given by cyberts and that is called as the cyberts only graft or thick free gingival graft so it it was helpful in restoring and increasing the ridge height and width that is uh, the cyberts class 3 classification it was used in restoring those defects so in this te technique what they did the recipient bed area was prepared by removing the epithelium one and they made striations so with the uh, sharp bp uh, blade they made striations on these epithelium that was done in order to induce bleeding and uh, increase uh, in 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 encourage vascularity in that region uh, and uh, then what they did they took a uh, only graft Uh, from the palate region of the tuberosity or the premolar molar region vault in the in the palatal area and uh, and these grafts so then only grafts so then placed on these striations and then was this only graft for then sutured onto onto this uh, these striations once you have done that then immediately you place a temporary crown so that uh, the there was a good tissue adaptation during healing around the temporary crown and you uh, get a good area on which you can again then go for your final uh, planning for your restoration that is the whenever you are doing your fixed preparation so healing advised in this type of uh, method was around 6 to 8 weeks so this is what was required and they gave a very good result when the amount of residual ridge defect is less then uh, another method is there that is to uh, give a gingival porcelain so this this is helpful when you are talking about um, in mandibular molar region or in mandibular incisor region so you can add slight amount of pink porcelain uh, in order to simulate the gingiva we also call that as gingival porcelain can be uh, added to simulate the interdental papilla so this can this method can also be used but only for mild defects when if you have severe defect then it will look really anesthetic and you will have black triangles which which where there will be food lodgement plaque accumulation will be there and uh, it will not be aesthetically viable another method of restoring uh, residual ridge defects are ridge augmentation this is uh, done by using allograft material such as hydroxyapatite or tricalcium phosphate or your freeze dried bone so you take bone grafts from different sources and then uh, you in those defects you can uh, place those grafts and and then they help in ridge augmentation but ridge, these ridge augmentation should uh, not be filled just for uh, if you are just uh, giving a fixed processes they are really successful and helpful when you are uh um, planning for dental implants so ridge defects are usually not filled with these materials actually uh, frankly speaking 
until uh, we plan for implant in these sites so ridge augmentation should be reserved when you are restoring with implants another method of restoring a severe residual ridge defects are by use of andrews bridge now andrews bridge are where you are having a severe uh, residual ridge defect with both the height and width so we have a very thin and very severe height uh, defect is there in those cases could be due to trauma or uh, periodontal uh, bone loss it could be because of these reasons and um, in those situation you give an andrews bridge now andrews bridge is when you give a kind of retainer in between that is a bar and you are giving a removable partial denture and clip uh, that denture onto this this bar so this is another type of method in which you can restore your residual risk defects so this is all about our, our presentation thank you for watching the video